It's that time of year again. Get your candy, pumpkins, and costumes ready because it's Halloween. And Halloween just wouldn't be complete without a game to scare you. Growing up, there were a ton of really creepy games that freaked me and my brother out every time we would play them. So it got me thinking. There were games that scared me as a kid, but would they still scare me as an adult? So it's time to relive these games and see if they're as scary as I remember. This is our search for the scariest DOS game. <laughs> now to make this fair, I played all of these games in the dark with the sound turned up nice and loud, so each game would have an equal opportunity to scare me. I tried playing each game for up to two hours, but some didn't get that much time due to the nature of the game, which you'll see in some of the reviews. I'm also doing one game for each year, and I decided to have the last year be 1995, since that was the year that Windows 95 came out, and then it started to dominate the market. I remember that the only reason why we got Windows 95 was because my dad wanted to play Diablo and it was a Windows only game. So I think it's appropriate to stop it this year. So without further ado, let's get to our first game, Transylvania 1986 by Penguin Software. This game is a text-based game and I'm so glad that I turned the sound way up because the music to this game is non-existent. <laughs> I mean, the game was made in 1986, but couldn't you at least put some kind of sound in here? I mean, even Pong had sound. All right, let's begin. Welcome to Transylvania. Won't you say? <laughs> really? All they're missing is an over-the-top blah. <laughs> Who is my next of kin? Why? Hmm, my next of kin. <laughs> Ugh! <laughs> You're facing an ancient stump covered with faint writing. Okay, so let's go north. <laughs> yeah, this game is just boring and confusing. Oh, a menacing Velwolf. <laughs> let's fight him. Well, looks like our furry friend had us for dinner. I would try this again, but it's pretty clear that this game will not be scary at all. Not having any music, and since it's just horribly drawn pictures, destroys any type of scary atmosphere for me, so on to the next game. Maniac Mansion 1987 by Lucasfilm. Now this game is a classic. It was so popular that it even got a remake in 2004 called Maniac Mansion Deluxe, but we're gonna stick with the classic. A little fun fact, the creator of Maniac Mansion, Ron Gilbert, developed the Scum game engine all because of this game. This stood for script creation utility for Maniac Mansion, and it would be used in a ton of games up until about 1998, but let's get to the game. So you play as Dave, who's the main character, along with two of his friends that you get to select. The objective of the game is we're trying to save Dave's girlfriend who's been kidnapped by a mad scientist. <laughs> Look at the size of his head, I love it. The game works off of a verb noun system with pre-selected options on the bottom here. The opening scene is pretty cool too, as you're locked out of the house and have to find a way to sneak in, but once you do, the game gets a little creepy because you have to sneak around the house completing objectives to try and save Dave's girlfriend. This game isn't so much scary as much as it is a bit of a thriller and a little funny. Like right here, while I was sneaking around the house, the doorbell suddenly rang and now the mad scientist or one of his family are going to be walking around the house. If you get caught, they put you in their dungeon and this game is also on a timer. And if you aren't careful, <laughs> Game over. This game has a ton of objectives you can do, along with multiple endings, but the creators stated that they made this game to make fun of B-list horror films. Although it does get some points for being a little creepy, it's not that scary. So forward another year. Dracula in London, 1988 by SDJ Enterprises. Well, the opening scene is a bit interesting. I, I remember seeing this game as a kid and never understood it, so hopefully now it'll make sense. Apparently you play as the characters from Bram Stoker's Dracula and you're tasked with killing him. Turns out, this is more like a board game than an actual horror game. Well, let's see what happens during the gameplay. So you have a ton of provisions and the typical vampire killing arsenal. Crucifix, garlic, <laughs> sacred wafer. <laughs> Really? <laughs> this is just awesome. I want one. All right, all right. I really want the next vampire movie to have someone throwing wafers at the vampires. We need to make this happen. Sorry, sorry. Back to the game. 
you have random events that happen throughout the game and the objective is to kill Dracula. And there are quite a few different things that can happen. Mina can get turned into a vampire herself. You can get arrested for breaking and entering during your investigation. It isn't a horrible board game considering it was made in 1988, but it's just not scary at all. Yeah. <laughs> on to the next one. A Nightmare on Elm Street 1989 by Westwood Associates. The game starts out with an interesting screen and then you get to see our boy in the burnt flesh, Freddy. He claws the screen and then kills Joey. <laughs> we didn't even get a chance to save him. A moment of silence for our boy Joey. Okay, he's dead. <laughs> Let's uh, select someone and play. So level one is really weird. You have this top down type of screen where you have to find Freddy's house. And while you're looking for this house, Freddy's chasing you and there's this weird thumping sound that I guess is supposed to be scary. I ran everywhere trying to find this stupid house, but luckily I found it after about 10 minutes and I was already starting to get bored with the game. But once you finally get into the house, this is where the character selection screen starts to make sense. All of the kids get special powers and Will and Taryn are easily the best. Will gets to throw lightning bolts and Taryn gets to throw knives. How cool is that? But then we get Kincaid and Kristen. <laughs> they get a punch and a kick. <laughs> yeah, they suck. So we run around to find a key and then climb down to the next level with the assistance of this nun that laughs at us whenever we die. So I'm pretty sure she's not on the up and up. You can save your game and reload it to try and get to the gardening demon from hell, but honestly, this game is only scary when you see Freddy Krueger's picture. That's not saying much, so next. Escape from Hell 1990 by Electronic Arts. So the intro's kind of scary i guess i mean at least there's music so hopefully we get something a little scary this game the game starts out with you laying down with your girlfriend and then she suddenly vanishes you get a call from the <laughs> divine phone company and then a demon tells you that you have been transported to hell <laughs> all right now we're talking let's do this uh, what the hell is this okay apparently this is a top-down rpg game and you have to ally yourself with people like Genghis Khan and Stalin. I guess it makes sense since this is hell and you're supposed to be paired with bad guys, not good guys. This game is just pop culture references in an RPG about hell. I mean, they brought in McDonald's slogan of over 60 billion served. This game was made in 1990, don't forget. And they even bastardized the post office's slogan. Yeah, this game is horribly slow. I guess it's not too bad as an RPG, because you do get to team up with people like Horatio and Hamlet to fight off the guards of hell, but it's not scary at all. So another year, another game. On to the next one. Dangerous Dave in the Haunted Mansion 1991 by ID Software. This game is a 2D side-scrolling action horror game where you're trying to rescue your brother Delbert who is lost in a haunted mansion. The game starts out with almost no dialogue. You run into the mansion and start shooting up zombies left and right. This game is probably going to be my shortest review <laughs> because there isn't anything scary about this game. The gameplay wasn't too bad, but in regards to scaring me, not happening. The other problem is each time you die from a different enemy, <laughs> it gives you this interesting cutscene and I want to watch each one and that keeps getting me sent back to the first level. Sorry to disappoint, but this game is a letdown in regards to being scary. Sorry Delbert, in the mansion you stay as we go to the next game. Alone in the Dark 1992 by Infogrames. Now, this game is one a lot of you probably already know. Playing it immediately makes you think about Resident Evil, and that's because this game is considered the forefather of the survival horror genre. If you're a fan of that genre, I highly recommend checking this game out. The game starts out with a selection screen, picking between a male or female character, but even though it's only for aesthetics as far as I can tell, <laughs> the stories are completely different. The guy sounds like an insane lunatic, and the girl sounds like she's just trying to figure out what happened to her uncle. So there's only one logical choice, of course. <laughs> the guy. The game itself is pretty creepy, but for me, this only happens when you turn off the sound. Listen to the difference. The music takes away from things like the creaky door, the moans, and the eerie footsteps, but this game is definitely scary. However, the controls on this game are horrible. Once you get hit by an enemy, it's pretty close to a game over unless you're able to back up. 
Then when you die, the stunt zombie from Thriller comes in and drags your corpse away. I love how her eyes are still open during this whole thing. <laughs> this scene actually scared me. I forgot about this thing jumping through the window. So you first see it hopping around right outside and then it jumps through the window. <laughs> yeah, that scared me. I'm happy because I finally found a game that was actually scary. I love how if you put the dresser here and then the creature tries to jump through, he makes this angry moan like he just ruined his day. I love how you don't always have to fight either and sometimes going for an all out assault is for nothing. Like this creature right here. He can't be killed as far as I know. I hit him about 30 times and he still didn't die. You have to use a mirror to kill him. I don't understand how that works, but hey, whatever works. So the whole story is you're investigating the house, you get trapped inside, and you're trying to escape. While you're trying to escape, you realize that the house must be burned down because it has been used as a spot for evil rituals to increase the longevity of a pirate by binding his soul to a tree. Yes, this is the actual story. <laughs> you burn down the tree and get the hell out of that house. <laughs> so there's this one part of the game I absolutely love. You're walking down the stairs trying to escape and all of a sudden from out of nowhere, the door slams shut and you start getting laughed at and you have no idea who it is. I would love to be able to do that to people. Just slam. <laughs> but once you leave the house, that's it. The game's over. It's a really quick game, but as of right now, this is the scariest one we've played. So clutching our blankets, we move on to the next one. The Seventh Guest, 1993 by Trilobite. The game is considered an interactive movie puzzle adventure game because a lot of the scenes are live action. And I'll tell you right now, the acting is terrible. Ugh. What the hell? Now at first, the atmosphere of this game was a little creepy, but not so much scary. You run around and solve puzzles going from room to room. <laughs> nope, back I go. All right, that was pretty scary. So now I think we're finally getting an all right horror game. Acting aside, this game is both creepy and a bit more scary than I had remembered. The game is also really fun to play. The puzzles can be insane, like this one right here. You have to get these rooks from one side of the board to the other, but you can have them be in a position to where they could take each other out. I remember beating this game as a kid and the ending honestly scared me back then. So the seventh guest is this kid that wandered into the mansion by accident and the old man and actually needs this kid's soul so he can complete a pact that he made with the demon. The demon in turn made him rich. So the kid eventually gets away and then the old man gets dragged down to hell. This scene really scared me as a kid. Now that we're done with this one, we're going to accept the invitation for our next game. Ecstatica, 1994 by Andrew Spence Studios. Now this game almost feels exactly like Alone in the Dark. The story is about a nameless traveler and you get to pick between a male or female character. Now the biggest problem I have with this game is it's too damn funny to be scary. So as you're walking into town, <laughs> you get pounced on by this demon and this thing just slaps you into next century. It is great. Here, watch. <laughs> that is so awesome. This combat system is ridiculous and it's like that for every single fight. It doesn't matter what you're fighting. It doesn't matter who you're fighting. <laughs> they're going to get slapped. So I'm officially renaming this game to Slap Statica. On a serious note, the narration of this game is terrible. The characters are way over the top. And spoiler alert, this game is not going to be number one. Sorry. So let's slap on the next game. Phantasmagoria 1995 by Sierra. This game is a point and click live action adventure game and it kind of reminds me of The Seventh Guest but there's a huge difference as soon as you start playing the game. The acting. It's so much better in my opinion and it's not Oscar winning by any stretch of the imagination but it definitely isn't bad.
We start out with our main character, Adrian, and her husband, Dawn, who just moved into a mansion that was once owned by a magician named Carno. They soon discover that he had five wives that all died mysteriously, but there are rumors that he was using black magic and got possessed by a demon. A few days later, after moving in, Adrian's husband starts to act overly aggressive, and as the game progresses, he sinks deeper and deeper into madness and becomes more and more of a bastard, in my opinion. Adrian begins having these visions of what happened to the wives of Carno, and this is where the game starts to really freak me out. They don't hold anything back when it comes to the violence of this game. It is unapologetically violent, and it only adds to the fear because you have no idea what might happen next. You find out later that Carno's last wife tried to murder him by, <laughs> listen to this, sabotaging his equipment for his most dangerous trick which ended up with his head being burned and brutally disfigured. In her defense though, he did brutally kill his previous four wives, so I think that she was just taking the initiative and taking him out before he could take her out. We later find out that Don actually did get possessed by the spirit of Carno, and he tries to kill Adrian, leading to a bloody showdown. I would go into more details about the ending, but it's so violent that I can't show a lot of it on this channel. The game is definitely a contender though, it was really well done. And this is our final game. Let's find out which game is the scariest. Now I have to put all these games through my super secret review formula, then I can confidently come up with our winner. And the winner is... Phantasmagoria. This game is scary. Even though the gameplay was simple, it allowed for the story and the horror to build up perfectly. The seventh guest did come close at number two, but ultimately the gameplay really took away from the fear factor. Some of those puzzles are hard. Looking at you, you stupid microscope puzzle. And while the horrible acting was funny to me, it did take away from the game being really scary. Phantasmagoria also had the biggest budget of all the games on this list, but besides the money, you can tell that a lot of love and care went into this game. They hired professional actors, they hired a professional special effects studio, and they went all out with the music as well. The composer did an amazing job because sometimes they would take out the music completely in some scenes to let the suspense build up. All of this combined made for a game that was the perfect recipe to try and bring chills to anyone playing it. And because the game is also so violent, the tension builds up perfectly you have no idea what's gonna happen to Adrian at any moment. So if you're looking for a game to really get you scared this Halloween, Phantasmagoria is the way to go. However, if you are trying to stay away from a ton of blood and gore, then I invite you to try out The Seventh Guest. It's definitely a close second on my list. Reliving this game was like trick-or-treating. Some houses give good candy, some houses give bad candy, and in 1994, <laughs> I gotta rock. But then you find that one house that everybody loves because they're giving out those king size candy bars. So even though I had to play some horrible games to find what I consider to be the scariest horror game for DOS, I still had fun doing it. And to me, that's what trick or treating is all about having fun. I just wanted to thank everyone for watching DW Relive Reviews, and if there's a game that you'd like us to review, please leave it in the comments below. We'll be posting new videos once a week, so click that notification button to get the latest in the series. As always, relive those great moments one game at a time. Until next time.